Today I wanted to talk about privilege access management and what that means for an organization. We're going to cover off some simple topics about what identity is, what privilege is, um, how the Delinea Secret Server can help with privilege access management and the risk that it takes to some organizations. Towards the end, we're going to run through some use cases and see some of the UI about some challenges that some people try to overcome when it comes to privilege access management. First of all, we want to cover off a few different topics. The first one is what is identity? Identity is something that you are. It makes up you. It can be your first name, last name, date of birth, email address, all those types of things. It allows users in an organization to be granted access to systems. So if you think about your Microsoft account, your Gmail account, these are identities that you use to log in at Facebook or something similar. A privileged identity is being able to access and manage privileged systems. So if you're in a HR system, for example, um, and you're onboarding people, or maybe you're in IT, you're also onboarding people, adding them to systems, you are a privileged user because you have the privilege to um, upgrade people so that they have more access into things. When you're a privileged user, you carry a level of risk that a regular identity doesn't carry. If your account is compromised, you have further risk to the organization. There are some very common ways to protect your identity. The most common way that everyone would understand is simply keeping a password. You'd know that keeping a complex password is important because that's something that everyone drills and drills and drills on about it doesn't matter where you are or what organization you work for. There are other ways to protect your identity, such as multi-factor authentication. This might come as a text message. It might come as a, an application that you have to add on as a third party. And it's basically a second step after you put in your password to identify who you are. Sometimes that second step can involve biometrics, so things like scanning your face um, or your fingerprint. And even these days, we can have physical keys that we can carry around with us too. So why would you want to implement a PAM system? Implementing a PAM system can stop lateral movement, it can provide monitoring and alerting, and if your account is compromised, it also limits the blast radius. So what do these things mean? When an attacker gets into an organization, what they want to do is they want to move laterally around the network and try and get more permissions or move to more important items, such as important servers within the organization. So limiting that lateral movement is very important. The way you do that with a privilege access management system is implementing a certain degree of limitation to each privilege user so they can't do certain things and they can't move laterally in the network. This limitation is typically called least privilege and that's what you would use in a privilege access management system and limit those privileges. The ability to monitor an alert allows you to trace who was at, had access to what. So if a user does compromise a privileged account, you can at least see uh, which passwords they viewed or which machines they logged into as well. A blast radius is very similar to lateral movement, where the blast radius is how far they can move after the account compromise has occurred. So we want to limit that blast radius as much as possible. When we start looking at the original privilege account problems, we see that there's RDP access to any machine for a lot of users, they can reset the password of every user, delete production resources, and there's limited to no monitoring on most of these accounts. They're typically and traditionally managed through something like Active Directory, and recently we've tried to federate all of our services so that any third-party application that you're logging into uses the identity of the organization, for example, firstname.lastname at organization.com, so that they can access those applications through one place. Privilege access management systems allow you to do things like recording RDP and SSH sessions. They can actually limit the access to the secrets or the passwords and resources in the organization so that you're following that least privilege. Once again, we have the full monitoring and recording of which secrets and passwords and things they've accessed. It's easier to manage because you have a holistic system and a single platform for these privilege users instead of them being spread out everywhere across your active directory and removing them from the PAM solution or privilege access management solution removes access to their account completely. So you don't have to worry about offboarding these users because as soon as you offboard them from the privilege access management system, all of their privilege access should be limited or removed. Because in this video, we're gonna be talking about Delinea Secret Server specifically, it's good to know what some of the features and options you have when implementing the system. We're gonna be looking at a very basic deployment of Secret Server just to show how simple it is to get this up and running. The core services include a secrets manager, which is basically a password vault. It gives you access control, automation of passwords, and 
uh, discovering passwords throughout the organization and user accounts. You also get session monitoring and control, which we spoke about uh, being able to monitor RDP sessions and SSH sessions. And it's provided by a distributed engine, which we will cover in this session as well. Enhanced auditing and workflow approvals. This quick secret server architecture really does showcase just how simple it is. So I've set this up in my own lab and I'm gonna run through those use cases that we've talked about. What we're seeing here is secret server is hosted in the cloud. So that's where all of your passwords will be stored. And it simply communicates with what we call a distributed engine. Now the distributed engine is basically going to carry out any of the functionality between secret server cloud and your active directory or scanning on premise. I think it's important here to stress and understand that the secret server Delineo setup is extremely easy. All you need to do is install the distributed engine, make sure it can connect to your Active Directory and the SAS Cloud accounts, and you're pretty much good to go to start rotating passwords and doing some other funky, cool privilege access management things. Let's talk about secrets. So secrets are really easy to understand, and it's just another word to use instead of passwords. Now, each secret can have something. Those somethings are a secret template, secret settings, and secret policies. These three things play a role in understanding how a secret works in an organization and allow us to do things like password rotation or using a passwordless system. Each secret will also belong to a folder and that folder can have role-based access control as well as the secret itself having role-based access control. That role-based access control is actually done through the secret settings. The key point here is we're going to take policies, templates, and access control to make sure that we can achieve our goal of creating these use cases towards the end of this video. The second thing you should understand is role-based access control. So if you've ever used any other type of password managers, managing system, or really any system to do with identity, you would understand that different roles get different access to different parts of the platform. In this case, we want to make sure that the users get access to the secrets they're allowed to access and other users don't get access to those secrets. The reason for this is because we don't want people using other people's identities and we don't want further privileges being given to people who don't need them. The role-based access control in Delinear is done through what we consider personas. Now, a persona is someone's work type. So for example, if you're a network engineer, you have the persona of a network engineer and you get assigned that role within the system. What that allows you to do is get access to systems like firewalls or switches or anything that has to do with your role specifically. If you're in another department, you will be given those different personas to make sure you have the least privilege in whichever environment is important for you to access. Every single secret has a series of settings that you can use and configure depending on how you want to treat that secret specifically. Now, secret settings are almost the same across the board when it comes to basic settings, like sending an email when the secret is viewed, or sending an email when the secret is changed. The thing that differentiates secret settings between secrets is what secret template they're assigned. And we're going to talk about that in the next section. So what you'll find is that depending on what type of secret template is assigned to your secret, you will have different secret settings, and you can customize that secret based on the settings that are available. A secret template is chosen as you onboard a secret into the environment. For example, if you're onboarding a secret that is for a domain account, you would be choosing a domain account secret template. If it is a web password, so something you're going to be using online, like a Dropbox account or a Gmail account, you're going to be using the web password template. Depending on which one you choose will obviously alter the secret setting choices that you get that I spoke about previously, but also will align with a specific launcher that you can use. Delinear Secret Server offers different launchers depending on the secret template that you've assigned, and you can customize these too and create your own secret templates. The launcher is designed so that the user can use the Delinear platform and launch their secrets from the Delinear console itself, rather than going outside, copying and pasting username credentials into different services. The common services that it offers is SSH, RDP, and web browsing. So you'll simply click the button within the Delinear platform, it will open up your SSH connection through PuTTY, or it will open up your RDP connection through a Microsoft Windows RDP connector, and it will automatically fill out the username, password, and connect the user for you. I think of secret policies like group policy objects within Active Directory. 
So you can inherit policies, policies can be assigned to folders, or they can be assigned to individual secrets. And this is where the real customization comes into the platform. If you really want to drill down and do some of the use cases that we're going to be looking at, you're going to want to use a secret policy and tie it to a specific secret or folder so that the outcome is what you want to achieve. We can do a secrets checkout, which means that whoever accesses the secret will check the secret out during that period of time and no one else can access the secret. So if it's a shared environment and a shared secret where people are logging into a single platform, but only one person can log in at a time, the secrets checkout allows you to have a bit of control over this. Approval workflows are so that if a user wants to administer something that maybe they're not supposed to, or maybe they need approval to work on it, you can actually create an approval workflow so that the user has to ask for approval from their manager, which all works through the Delinear system. The manager then can approve the workflow or the access to the secret in Delinear itself, and then the user can use it for a certain amount of time. And that time is set in the console. So you could use it for an hour, two hours, five hours, three days. Each secret can be set with multi-factor authentication. So before you access a secret, you have to fill out a multi-factor authentication. You can get email notifications for secret access or use. You can ask your users to comment on a secret before you check it out. So they have to say, uh, actually today I'm gonna to be using this secret to do X, Y, and Z. And the last one, and one of the use cases that we're gonna be looking at today is passwordless. So we can configure it so that a user can use a secret launcher whether that's in a web browser or an RDP connection. And instead of actually copying and pasting that secret out, they can't actually see the secret themselves. They can just use the launcher to get to where they need to. Use case one, remote password changing. So remote password changing can be configured in a few different places. You can simply go to a secret that has remote password changing as an option. We can turn it on and assign a username and password that can go and change the secret. The reason that we need to do this is because as the distributed engine carries out the task to change the password, it needs to be using valid credentials on the domain that has the privilege to change those credentials. Normally this is undertaken by an administrator, so creating a service account to carry out remote password changes with least privileges is usually the recommended option. The second way to do this is to create a secret policy. In the secret policy, you can choose remote password changing, configure the username and password there, and then assign it to the secret folder or the secret itself. The reason you would use a secret policy instead is so that you can assign it to a folder and affect all of the secrets from an inheritability perspective. This makes managing your secrets much easier and makes your policies widespread across the organization's secrets rather than just an individual secret itself. You can see here assigning the policy to a different secret folder is really simple and straightforward and very easy to manage. So passwordless, I've mentioned this a few times. The reason that you use passwordless is to stop the administrators from actually being able to enter their password manually into systems. If they can't enter their password manually into systems, then they can't be compromised. They can't copy and paste it into a phishing website. Um, and if their Delinear account is somehow compromised, when an attacker gets in there, they can't actually grab the domain admin credentials at all. I think this is a really good showcase of two different parts of Delinear coming together to really prove out the system and make a really cool workflow for people to follow. So in this example, a user is going to have a password that they can't actually see. They're simply just going to be using a launcher. When they access that password, they have to go and request approval from their manager. In this example, I'm going to be logging in as the user and the manager. So you can see it from both, both perspectives. So as the user asks for access to the secret, the manager then can log into their platform and see a notification and approve whether or not they get access to the secret. In this functional workflow, it's going to be approved for a certain amount of time. We're going to ask the users to comment on why they need it and why it was approved. And you'll see after the user logs back in to access that secret, there'll be a timer and they'll be able to see the secret itself. You'll notice that the secret still doesn't contain a password because in this case, the user doesn't need it in the administration process that they're completing. Instead, they're just going to be using an SSH launcher, an RDP launcher or similar so that they can still access the resources that they need to, but they don't actually need to see the password. The reason for this is because if they're a user that shouldn't regularly get access to these systems, then they might just copy and paste this password into a notepad or something like that if they did get access to it. So you can do this with things like third-party vendors, allowing them to have access to things after an approval workflow has been approved. 
We also reduce passwords based attacks, like I was talking about with the phishing emails. We can auto rotate these passwords without a problem of the user copying them out of the platform and then not being able to use them again. And lastly, domain administrators. So some people do need to administrate systems, but they shouldn't be doing it all the time. So going through this workflow approval um, and then not having actual access to the password limits their ability in the organization and through the entire systems as to what they can do and what damage they can cause. In the last example, we're going to look at the launches and screen recording. So the launches are really easy. We simply go to a secret that's configured with a secret template that has the launcher added. So we can see an RDP template here or a domain template with RDP connected to it. We simply click the connection and it opens up RDP for us. This is the exact same for an SSH launcher. Lastly, lots of organizations struggle to understand what users are doing on endpoint machines and they might want to watch them a little bit more closely. So if you have a domain controller that people aren't really supposed to be administrating or logging onto directly, you can install Delinea's screen recording agent. What that means is that it doesn't matter if a user is using the RDP launcher or RDPs onto the machine itself, it's going to get a full screen recording of whatever's happening on that machine. You can actually go and review these recordings and stop them in real time. And the recordings will show you the full visual of what's happening during that screen recording session. It will also show you a heat map so you can determine when people are using the machine. And you can even go down to a process level. So we can see on the right side, the processes are actually recorded that happened during this. So if you think someone is getting up to something malicious, installing something malicious on the network, and you have this screen recording, it's full proof of exactly what happened during that period of time. Having this level of visibility is important for a lot of organizations. Being able to review some of the footage if an incident occurs is extremely important to understand why it happened and who is responsible for it happening. Well, thank you for sticking around till the end. I hope you learned enough about secrets and enough about the Delinear platform that you fully understand how it can be utilized. Obviously, the use cases in this video is not a full and holistic view of what the platform can do. There's many other components that we could spend hours and hours talking about. Realistically, Secret Server is the first step away from something like a password manager, and implementing it with these small use cases is, again, the first step to achieving your privilege access management implementation. I hope you enjoyed the video.